Hello, my name's Ali Plum. I work for the BBC. Well done, me. Hello, Paul. Um, <laughs> I now, love Ali Plum as a name. That's so great. You're telling me uh, every day I want to call my parents and go, really? <clears throat> You're one of the Avengers. Are you here to help? Wonder and vision. Aren't we a fine pair? This is our home now. I want us to fit in. So usually, because this is a becoming interview, at this point at the beginning, I'd say, your vision, how the heck did that happen? But two years ago, you yeah. already gave me an amazing answer to that. So I'm going to say this. As vision wasn't your first entry into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you were Jarvis. How the heck did that happen? Um, here's what here's what happened is John Favreau called me up. It was 2008, I believe, right? So the bottom has fallen out of the economy all over the world. I've got one recommendation. Ready? Ready? Ha <laughs> ha! Sell, sell, sell! Abandon ship! And I'm wondering how I'm going to pay the mortgage. And luckily, John Favreau rang me up and he said, um, Paul, I'm looking for somebody uh, that has absolutely no personality at all to play a robot in this. <laughs> Good morning. It's 7 a.m. The weather in Malibu is 72 degrees with scattered clouds. The surf conditions are fair with waist to shoulder high lines. High tide will be at 1052 a.m. <laughs> and I was there, I went, I'm in! I'm in, John, I'm in! And um, yeah, that's, that's exactly how he pitched it to me. You are not authorized to access this area. Jesus. That's Jarvis, he runs the house. And your superpower in that movie is exposition for the first few films. Oh my God. Well, the truth of how I really uh, ended up, I think, getting vision is that everybody just loved me. Jarvis, you there? At your service, sir. And they loved me because, wait, right? They loved me because after they'd shot the movie, and, and it, something wasn't making sense. And then they spent millions on CGI to make it make sense. If it still didn't make sense, they could just have me go, oh my God, the baddies are coming up on your left, sir. And it would be clear and they go, oh my God, this guy's a genius. Whiplash 2, if you have a clear shot, take it. You've been re-engaged, executed basically. Keep going. And they've, you solved all of our problems. And, <laughs> I, I love the idea that you got the job for your wife, Jennifer, by saying, you know, Spider-Man Homecoming, that's a good gig. You should get in on that. Good evening, Peter. Hello? Hello? Congratulations on completing the rigorous training wheels protocol and gaining access to your suit's full capabilities. Ah, thank you. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. Liz, we talked about this. Yes, but the door was open, so I assumed that... When Civil War came out in 2016, we talked about the makeup, the costume, the prosthetics... And you had an amazing way of describing it, like being inside a gin and tonic. Oh, yeah. Tell me now with WandaVision, tell me it's got easier, that it's quicker. It has got easier. It's less cla claustrophobic. Ah. <gasps> Am I dead? No. Why would you think that? Because you are. It still starts under my eyebrows and goes all over the back, but my ears are free. I don't have to wear the big cowl. They just make that in post. We are an unusual couple, you know. Oh, I don't think that was ever in question. Chris Evans has talked to me about eyeball acting, where when you've got the cowl on, you have to really kind of emote. I can't believe I made a whole movie with this thing on. <laughs> Is there a sense of that for you with the kind of plastic balaclava and all the rest that you've got to really give it some, particularly in WandaVision, where it's very heightened? Right, so his eyes are a little further back from the thing where it's kind of just paint on mine. So I don't really, I don't really, and also I think an awful lot's going on when you're purple. You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta, <laughs> kind of gotta slightly back off the performance a little bit because uh, you're, you're purple, <laughs> you know? And sometimes you can forget. And now you play, obviously, a super intelligent, flying, phasing android. Are there particular lines of tech flim flam that you'll never forget because they're so hard to put in your brain and get out your mouth? Um, the depletion rate of palladium is increasing exponentially, sir. Because I've got a great line for you. Oh, God, give me one. Miss Maximov manipulates molecular polarity, allowing her to alter reality. Is that, I, I had to say that? Miss Maximoff manipulates molecular polarity, allowing her to alter reality. I am a little harder to explain. What, and I did it? Yeah, ish, eventually. 
Ms. Maximoff manipulates them gut by the shit. Ms. Maximoff manipulates molecular polarity. I'm sure because I couldn't do it now. Oh my it's, god. It's, I feel like it's the beginning of your rap career because it just almost <laughs> rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> What would you say, Paul, are your favourite vision scenes in the film so far? Because, like, lifting Thor's hammer's got to be one, right? So there may be no way to make you trust me, but we need to go. Yeah, loved that moment and loved being in an audience and watching everybody react to that. Like, the fans, the real dyed-in-the-wall fans just went, Oh, no! And it was, that was great. Yeah, that was, that was great. Right. Well done. And I also, I also just, I really loved our scene in Edinburgh. I don't know, I, but it, it, you know what? I'm just going to speak for myself. I, I, I think, I, I think it, it, works. It, it, it works. It works. And I really loved uh, dying twice. And I really loved. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be you, but it is. It's all right. You could never hurt me. I really loved when the Russos came up to me and Lizzie and were like, can you just, um... and he was laughing because he knew how, what a difficult request it was. He went, can you just like improvise around the death scene? I just feel you. And I went, what? <laughs> they went, just improvise the dialogue. And I went, improvise the dialogue from an android who's girlfriend is killing him with and they went y yes and so we did and uh, somehow some brilliant editor somewhere cut out all the really embarrassing bits I love that bit in Edinburgh. You must have had a sense of pride seeing in that takeaway shop. We will deep fry your kebab. <laughs> there you go. You need it. It's not we can. We no, will. We will. We'll do, we're going to do it. <laughs> yeah. gotta, you come in and it's getting fried. <laughs> You've told me a great story before about Joss Whedon essentially giving you some direction on how to shoot a laser beam out of your forehead. That's true. I was wondering if there are any other moments like that, you know, you were saying with the Russo brothers, will you just get the craziest notes playing Vision? Uh, there, there is. I remember Joss on the first day, we shot the wide shot of me. I've been born, I've gone to the window, and now I'm giving a speech. And he was up on the balcony shooting the big wide shot. I'm not Ultron. I'm not Jarvis. I am. I am. Then lunch was called, and he, I was called into his trailer, and he went, Paul, I, um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know how to say this. I just, you, I, I, we, we shot it, and you look a, you look a little bit, you know, like a, I don't know, like a robot. And I looked, and I caught sight of myself in the mirror, and I'm purple. I've got this cowl on. I'm in a green. I went, oh, oh yeah, you think I look a bit like, a, yeah. Oh, oh. I don't know what that could be. So, that, yeah, that, that. <laughs> that's beautiful. And over the course of this show and all of the movies, what mementos have you taken home? Because in my mind, you should at least get a like prop mindstone. Oh, I have better than that. Um, oh, yeah. They, they have this, they make this sort of death mask um, of me and they make a sort of uh, a vision, a vision head that is then painted and it has the thing and. Um, it has the Mind Stone, and then uh, I mean, it just looks exactly like me, but with my eyes closed. And it's really eerie, right? Because it looks exactly like me. And I stole that. And at New Year's, we have loads of people come over with their, uh, you know, families and whatever. And I will move it around into people's rooms to fight them. We have the Amazing. best is we have these bunk beds that have curtains, like in a train or whatever. And so if you if you, if you you put the pillows under a duvet and you put the head at the top, and then you close the curtain, you suddenly open something, <laughs> ah, and it never fails. I was going to ask you what fans say to you in the street, but I imagine they're just too, going, too busy going, you're not purple. Hmm. 
You know what? Fans, what fans say to me in the street is still from a knight's tale where they go, oh, naked guy. I mean, I live in New York City, so it's. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, charging. Thank you, Paul. It's been so much fun. Have a great rest of your day. Really nice talking to you. Take care. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio 1 movies and TV podcast screen time on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum.